My research group focuses on the characterization and sensor development of molten salts for next generation reactors. Um, and today I'm going to be giving us a, a little overview on a sensor that we've been developing for online monitoring of molten salts, which uses fiber coupled plasma discharges. So big question that will arise is what's in the salt? And the answer to that may vary depending upon what analytic technique, but why should we care about what's in the salt? The reason is because we're gonna to need to know things such as what concentration of elements there are for processing of uh, chemical online processing, for refueling, uh, looking for contaminants, uh, also in the pyroprocessing business, understanding how much actinizer in the, in the, the pot. And also our, our program is actually being supported and funded by um, uh, NEUP grants under the IMPACT program. This is the um, Materials Protection County and Control. Uh, technologies. And under that, we care about uh, proliferation risk and understanding where this uh, nuclear material is. So a critical uh, challenge facing the future utilization of molten salts is the necessity of an online uh, elemental sensor that can operate, operate in extreme molten salt environments. So there are many different ways of going about this. Um, there are several analytic methods, uh, all of which are, you know, have passed or are currently being researched. Uh, things such as ICPMS are kind of the gold standard in this, where we use this as kind of a, a validation. Uh, those tools require salt extraction out of the reactor and then analysis offsite. Um, this proposes two you know, challenges, which is you are extracting salt that can, contains actinides out of the reactor. That's not, um, that's not ideal. Also, you lose a little bit of your real-time access for understanding uh, real-time processes. So there are different avenues of going about this, some using nuclear, some using uh, electrical chemical methods, which I show here, great work coming out of Argonne. Um, the one I'll be talking about right now is based on a plasma technique similar to the lips that you've just seen. Um, the concept here is to take salt, uh, heat it up to really high temperatures, ionize it, and during that phase, you have bound-bound transitions, which again, uh, create an elemental signature. An example of this is laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. There are a lot of challenges in the molten salt um, configuration to having a plasma spectroscopy sensor, uh, things such as high temperature corrosion, inert gas, and of course, in a radiated field. Um, one can't really just put in a plasma inside the bulk of the salt. Uh, you have a lot of spectral line broadening and a continuous spectrum emerges. Um, so oftentimes it's done right on the surface. Now, the issue with salts is they actually grow a little film on top and also inside of a reactor, things are stirring up and moving around. So it's hard to hit that target. Um, and not only that, but when you're um, doing these optical measurements, you need pristine optical access. Um, so coming to this, we were inspired by LIBS, um, but you know, during my own PhD, there are many ways uh, that we you know, um, innovated to make plasmas. Some using lasers, some using sound, ask me later about that, and also electric discharges. So looking through the literature on understanding, has anybody done this before? Has anybody even tried to use electric discharges inside of molten salts? Kind of weird, probably makes the electrochemist freak out, but this is the thing that we wanted to give uh, a look at. And to my surprise, there hasn't been. So this is kind of low hanging fruit. And so what we did is we um, put together a proposal for the DOE. So, and which we were uh, great, we were grateful and we rewarded this for a technique that we call plasma bubble spectroscopy. Um, which is a uh, R&D project uh, that we have completed about uh, three weeks ago. And we were fortunate enough to get a new NEP grant to go from our development phase to a demonstration phase. So let me give an overview of essentially, there, there's a long history to this and it's a seven minute talk, but we did go through a lot of iterations of different discharge geometries, high voltage geometries, et cetera. And we've come to an evolution of what we call um, the arc bubbler, we as in I. Um, we have in this arc bubbler, um, an optical fiber that's embedded inside an alumina tube. And in there is a high voltage tungsten electrode. Now in that tungsten electrode uh, space, there's a argon gas that flows through it and hence bubbles out of it. And so um, the point of this is that an electric discharge will form in an argon gas and then interact with the salt liquid at the bubble interface. Um, these are my two students, graduate students, uh, Kayla Hahn and uh, Davis Briars, who are just rock stars and are just doing a wonderful job on this, um, on this uh, sensor development. Um, the return electrode here is it's shown in black, which is a graphite tube. 
Um, so this is done in an aqueous system just so you can get a visualization of how this operates. But you have an electric discharge that comes in from a high, a high voltage electrode up here. You see this purple, that's argon. And then down at the bottom, you see this yellow. That's what you see on street lamps, which are sodium. So that's the sodium lines that you see. Um, over here is a high speed video of it. And the cool thing about this is you can actually start seeing some of the physics of this, which is liquid pulling into the capillary, creating new fresh analyte for the discharge. Um, it looks chaotic. Um, it looks, um, you know, like it shouldn't be stable, but I, nature threw us a bone here and it turned out to be extraordinarily stable. We were able to operate this thing for hours and hours with uh, great stability on the order of 10 to 15%. So that was in aqueous. Have we done this in uh, molten salt? Yes. And uh, this one was done in neodymium, chlor uh, excuse me, neodymium chloride, which is blue, fun fact. And also uh, we did it in chromium chloride salts uh, where we add 0.1 uh, molar percent and it, we couldn't see through it except when the plasma was on Then it glowed like a light bulb. So it was really beautiful plasma. You can see the, uh, that line right here, which is our argon plasma. And down here is where it interacts with the salt, uh, creating a dish, uh, creating plasma. So here's the spectrum of it. Um, our lithium uh, potassium lines is our kind of reference, some argon lines. And then right over here in this region are our chromium lines that come out. And the chromium lines, um, you can see a blow up here. This is a 4P to 4S transition within here about 425 nanometers. Um, all of those lines are chromium lines and they are all um, less than 22 picometers in resolution. This is important um, because again, nature threw us another bone, which is the spectral line widths are narrower than the resolution of our spectrometer. So we need a new spectrometer because uh, when we wanna do more complex salts, these spectral lines will be all, all over the place and we need to be able to separate them. Also, if we wanna do isotopic measurements and the uranium has a transition in this region, which needs about 25 picometers of resolution. So the possibility of doing isotopic is here. Um, and at the risk of being a heretic at a molten salt reactor workshop, we have done this in liquid metals as well. Uh, it's really cool and it works and we're really excited about it because maybe there are other potential application spaces outside of molten salts. Um, but that is what uh, we have done with liquid metals. And then our future work, and this is the R&D project that we have now, uh, spanning from now to 2026, is to demonstrate this sensor in different environments. Um, at NC State in my lab called Muscle, um, we are going to do uh, chloride, uh, uranium salts for long periods of time to see the robustness of the sensor, how and where, and, you know, how um, it breaks down and also the stability. We're also gonna do uh, Flynac uh, thorium salts in this too. Uh, moving on, we're gonna do the limits of detection, which is to understand how many different elements that we can have all at once in a crowded spectra, essentially looking at the mud that is the, the results of fission products, et cetera, um, coming into uh, that evolve in a reactor. So we're gonna go take electro refiner salt from INL in collaboration with Dr. Alan Williams um, to take salts out of the hot fuel examination facility and then do uh, a detection, a limits detection study. And then finally, we procured a Copenhagen uh, molten salt pumped loop um, to look at the uh, time response of the detector uh, which means that we're going to throw ingots of salt in there and see how it actually responds. So this will help us in two regards. How quick is the response of the sensor and also um, how will it operate in a flowing environment? And with that, thank you very much.